Hey, hello. Oh, it's live now. Okay. Uh, that's great. We had a small uh, technical issue, but we are here live now. So I hope uh, everything uh, goes well uh, from now. So thanks uh, everyone for uh, being here. Uh, wel welcome to the uh, Out of the Box Developer. Uh, my name is Hugo and I help professional web developers to design better architecture uh, so they can influence on important decisions and also start leading their team. And today we're gonna talk about very important topic that is also related to architecture uh, topics. And, and it's, um, how can I say it? have been around for a long time and we uh, love to talk about it. That is testing our code. So I think many, many of, uh, many of us uh, have a lot to, to discuss around it and uh, not just the theory, but I, uh, one thing that is very interesting, that would be very interesting for everyone uh, would be bringing some real experience from the, uh, from the industry, from the market. So I will call uh, my good friends here to help me with this uh, discussion. So, hey, Mani, uh, how are you? Hey, Hugo, I'm good. How are you? Thank you for having me here. Thanks, Mani. And, uh, and yeah, I hope, I hope you enjoyed this discussion today. Will be a lot to, uh, to add here and, and share experience, right? I think I hope everyone so has something, some story about testing. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah, it's, I think it's an, a very important and interesting topic. And uh, uh, yeah, looking forward to it. So great to have this topic on today's session. Great. And uh, I will also call, call my, my good friend, uh, Pedro Cavallero. He will be uh, showing also some examples. He brings some examples here. He did this uh, work, all this work to just to uh, grab uh, more hands-on experience for you guys. So, hey, Pedro, how are you? Hello, hello, Yogo. Hello, Manny. Thank you hello, for, for inviting me here, Yogo. And yeah, testing is something that we do every day in our work, right? So I think this is something that we should talk about more often because uh, uh, it's so important. We have so many stories of success and failures because of testing. So yeah, it's important. To, <laughs> we, it, it will be a good session today. Great, and of course uh, we have the uh, uh, our our good friend and uh, always here also uh, helping us and uh, bringing all his experience and Bruno Souza. Hey Bruno. Hey, hello everyone. Hey Hugo, how are you doing, man? Hey Mani. Hey Pedro. So hello. good to have you here. So hello, hello. Yes, yeah, you know, I think that testing is one of the most important discussions that we can have for software development those days, right? Because not only we have things like, you know, test driven development, but also testing is, is fundamental for the quality of the software. And we know that the higher quality of the software is, uh, you know, the, the, the faster we can actually deliver it. Right. So it's awesome. Uh, great discussion today. Great. Yeah. Looking forward to it. And, and before we start anything here, I want to uh, recall uh, this message that may be a little bit annoying <laughs> that is uh, showing up here uh, all the time but we, we got on for the next session we're going to be moving our sessions uh live sessions to the monday so expect us to be alive on the next session on the march 6 uh, monday okay at the same time uh but we'll be on the beginning of the week and, and yeah, I hope that would be uh, fit everyone's time uh, schedule. And yeah, hope to see you all there. And, uh, and, and yeah, uh, and I hope everyone also here uh, be able to, to stay and, and keep these discussions uh, all along the time. So um, let's start with the, um, a, a question that maybe uh, it's very common uh, that I see people that are, I had a lot of projects that already had tests implement, implemented on it or, or project that doesn't have any tests implemented on it. And most of cases, uh, they always put on the balance uh, the uh, tests. Oh, uh, should I create tests or should, should I deliver first? What, what, was, uh, what should I do? So I will start with, <laughs> with a biggest <laughs> discussion already here maybe, right? <laughs> so who, who wants to start with this uh, giving point of view about that? <laughs> 
So, so what are your questions? Give me one by one. Like, you know, tell me what are the priorities in, in, in your priority yes. order. Tell me what those questions are. Uh, uh, yeah, the, the first question is, uh, what uh, should I uh, should I implement this uh, and um, maybe not deliver in the time, or should I uh, or, or not? Uh, should I implement this uh, or don't implement this and deliver whatever we, I have in the end? So firstly, actually, um, um, by saying the two things, it's a little bit, there's a little bit of a disconnect there because mm -hmm. what are you going to deliver and when are you going to deliver, right? Is not determined by you. What you're going to deliver and when you're going to deliver is de determined by how you start. When you start, you already create the finish, right? If you start well, you finish well. So if you're already saying, oh, I'm going to deliver this software, I think, I think you're, you're jumping the gun there. You got to you got to understand what you're going to deliver first, and how you're going to deliver it, and then the when you're going to deliver will automatically happen when you know the how and what you're going to deliver, and in between is the method in which you're going to use to deliver or develop what you're going to deliver. Right. So lots of words here, but I'm coming to the point. If you don't think about testing, then your delivery is out of the box or out of the basket or in the basket way before you even started working. Right. Because, and you buy a lot of delivery time when you start developing tests. People say, oh, you're spending a lot of time. You haven't even started coding, but you're writing tests. And you're thinking about tests and, and thinking about all the impact and, and, and dependencies and risks and all that and, and how you're going to test it. But if you leave that for the afterthought, then you're actually, first of all, you might have developed an incorrect solution. So you have to go back and redo it. And secondly, you'll encounter all those issues which you may start fixing which may be pointless because you already started off wrong. So I think I can go on talking about this from so many angles and it'll still mean the same thing. And I think all of you, I'm hoping the audience as well, get my point, right? You buy time, you create time, you invest time. When you start thinking about tests, writing tests, developing tests, from, from that test, whatever code comes out is a lot more reliable and it's ring fenced as opposed to trying to deliver something and put delivery dates and not have a test plan and not have a test process in place. Uh, that's my very high level answer to that. Obviously, everybody else has a different perspective and I'm happy and interested in hearing what everybody has, else has to say as well. Juan Pedro. Okay. Uh, I know you have something to say, so don't be shy. For sure, sure. Yeah. Well, what I, I think in the in uh, the 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 uh, a simple answer for that, I think I I have uh, someone has said before. I don't remember who that if you are not delivering when you are delivering code and you are not delivering the test of your code, this is not a it's not a professional way to do the to to make this delivery. You know, because uh, and I completely agree when money says that when we, uh, if we don't, if we, when we do tests, we are buying time, right? Uh, investing time, because man, uh, uh, we have done done many different systems before, and we can see that a system is not a small, never a small system. There is, it is never a small set of rules. It's never uh, easy integrations or with third parties or something. So when we started to say, oh, it's just a, 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 it's just a, a simple thing to do. It never is when you want to, if you want to go to, produ to production with this code. So when, if we don't, do tests from the beginning, or we are saying from the beginning, right? If you don't do tests from the beginning, in the middle, we will start to get in, in the, in, in the, just like some, some place in the beginning yet, we're going to start to have some troubles. We're going to start to have difficult. We're going to start to, to start debugging things because things are not working, you know? So, we need to start testing from the beginning. It's very, very important. So this question, 
uh, uh, just just finish my my case here. This question, it's not it's not a, a, a we don't we cannot have these two options, right? It's not oh I will just deliver without test or I will do tests and don't deliver. If you don't do tests, we will not do we will not deliver because the delivery will be really problematic for you. Maybe not on the beginning, but during the life cycle of that software, you know, we know that software has a not normally a software has a, a big um, a many years of life. So uh, yeah, when we find when we say deliver, it's not only the day one. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Very well said. What do you have to say, Hugo? You're the one who started the question, so let's see. Yeah, uh, about that, I have I have a, a, an opinion, but uh, also uh, for myself, I think uh, it all depends. Of course, uh, it's very important to have quality delivers and delivers. But uh, how much quality is a, is a thing that is very abstract for me. Uh, how much quality, like like when we do clean. Uh, architecture or clean code, how much clean do we want to deliver it? So I think uh, I see some places that they force to have 100% of, uh, of coverage of some project. And I don't see so much value by bringing 100% of coverage. Maybe 8% is good enough uh, for that. And I would be investing a lot of time and money with something that won't be bringing so much attention. And one, one, also one thing that I, I believe it's very important is uh, which places we do actually want, uh, want to make keep tests there. I, I see a lot uh, this discussion and, and difficulties actually because, well, uh, well uh, this is for my own experiences, uh, but some people see tests as a very simple and mechanic things. And in the end, I think it's the totally opposite. They, there are the business rules. There are the, the purpose of that code, and they will actually validate that code. So it, it needs a much more higher level of understanding about the business rules, about what is uh, what we have to deliver. And, uh, and, and so uh, it needs more experience for people to actually define and, and, and do good tests, actually. Uh, that's also a good good question because a uh, good test. What is is there good test and bad test? Maybe I will I will just make open a bit of the room. Maybe Bruno can <laughs> feel, feel with more uh, more experiences <laughs> and and yeah. But that that's my point as well. Maybe uh, there's not a, a very um, uh, uh, right or wrong in a very clear way. I think there's some something in the middle, a bit abstract. And, and yeah, we have to always be balancing things. And uh, uh, of course, it's not like, like Pedro said, uh, it's not one or another. It's a bit of one and a bit of another, maybe, <laughs> because we can't actually can't have all the things we want. <laughs> mm -hmm. Okay, so um, the, I think this question is so, so important. You know, I think that, we, you know, we could we could probably just stay the whole day just talking about this one thing, because I see this all the time, right? Developers, imagine you coming to your boss, right? Your manager and saying, hey, boss, you know what? I need, we need more time to do testing, right? And then the boss is going to say, why? If you don't, if you don't do testing, you deliver faster. And then you say, yes. Okay. So of course, don't do testing them, deliver faster, right? You know, who, who in the right mind would, you know, do something uh, uh, that will make the project slower or later, right? You know, if, if so, so that is the wrong question to ask, right? Because in reality, if you, if you do, if you as a developer, if you do really believe that if you don't test your software, you can deliver faster, right? Something is wrong. Can you see that something is wrong with that idea, right? So intuitively, we think something is wrong, right? You know, it doesn't make sense that because I do testing takes more time. But at the same time, that's what we believe all the time, right? We know that's so. Here's the thing, right? So I'm gonna try to see here. Maybe, maybe you go if you can 
make me a little bit bigger there. Might be easier. Uh, no, so zoom, zoom, yeah. Zoom in, right? Yes. That's it. Now you're zoomed in. All right. So, so here's the thing, right? So we know uh, this thing here, right? So that's – we know this graph, right? We know – oh, you go move people to the side so I can make it larger. All right. So – so let's imagine we have a graph here, right? Uh, um, you know, here is the time that it takes to deliver the project, right? So higher is more time, okay? And on the bottom is the quality of software, right? So we know that the more quality the software have, right? the more time we, we, we take to deliver it, right? So we know the graph ends right here, right? So we think that the way the graph goes is like this, right? You know, the more quality, the more time. But that's not how the graph goes. The, the real graph goes like this. Right? That inflection point right here is more or less 95%. 95% of what? So it's a special measurement of quality is the amount of defects that we caught before production. Okay? So if you get 95% of, of bugs before production, of problems before production, this is the fastest you deliver your software. Of course, if you go, if you try to get 100%, right? Now, if you're doing the software for the, the, the space shuttle, for example, right? You know, then you might need, it's, it's going to be, you know, the, the last 5% is very expensive, right? So if we see this graph here, right? So it takes less time if you have software with more quality. So the question that you're asking is the wrong question, right? You know, should I deliver the project faster or should I do testing? No, if you want to deliver the project faster, you do testing, right? Now, the question you should ask is, okay, Bruno is saying this, but is this graph true, right? Is that a real, you know, that's, that's, is that reality? And so the research being done behind this is, is, have tested more than 13,000 projects, right? And come up with this graph. So the chance that your project is different, it's pretty small, right? So, you know, so it is a real scientific uh, uh, work, right? So this is the reality. So the more you, the more quality you put in your project. So that's why we do things like TDD, we do testing, you know, we do, uh, uh, integration testing, we do uh, acceptance tests, whatever you do, right? To reduce the time that you deliver your software. Now, of course, like Manu was saying, right? Of course, if you're like one week away from delivery time and you say, oh, we have to implement all the tests for the project because we didn't, didn't do any testing yet, right? That's a different discussion, right? But even that, if you're one week away from delivering the project and you never tested anything, what is the chance they're going to deliver the project in one week? It's zero, right? It's not going to happen anyway, right? So again, the more effort you put to increase the quality, to get bugs, the faster you're going to deliver the project. So even if there's just one week to deliver and there's zero tasks, adding some tasks, we're actually going to make the project deliver faster than you would otherwise, right? So this is the right question to ask. And when we think about this, everything we can discuss today makes a lot of sense, right? Because all of us, we want to deliver projects faster, right? We want less time. We want the least amount of time possible in our projects to get ready. Otherwise, you know, why would we be doing it, right? So that's what I wanted to say. Yeah, I think I think um, what you explained, Bruno, actually, when I started off, I said there is a disconnect between yeah. the two components. And you actually just made that point very clear here. If it's a wrong question, it's because it's, there's a disconnect, right? Exactly. And the analogy I want I want to give here is 
and I want to say something else after the analogy I want to give here is it's like saying, hey, um, uh, I want to make a cake. Should I put the cake on top of the stove and not turn on the oven and not put it in the oven? Or do you want me to put the, the can in the oven without the ingredients in it? Because I think the can will get the, the tray will get heated up faster with little or, le or no ingredients in it. And, and I don't know the, the, the recipe, but I've just I'll just put something in it. You'll get something like a cake. Because at least we'll have something, right? Because it'll be faster. We'll have something. Right. Right. Yeah. Or you take the time, you make the ingredients, but then you also have to make sure all the other things are, you know, tested, like your oven works. You have the ingredients in the right proportion. You have the right recipe, right? You're looking at the recipe of making soup and you're going to make cake. That's not going to happen, right? You've got the ingredients of the cake and you're looking at the soup and you have never done this before and you don't even know if the oven works and you don't even know the combination of certain things and you have not tested it out, right? So, so there are so many different angles to this. And the third thing I want to say here is when somebody asks a question like this, it separates the wheat from the chaff. I don't know if you've heard of this saying. Means it shows their level of maturity of doing projects, of delivering projects, of working on a project, of understanding how to write code and how to write tests and how to write, how to deliver something that is robust, reliable, yeah, consistent, uh, nearly bug free, because you know, you can never have anything bug free in today's time. There's always something, but something that has full business coverage. That's what I always uh, talk about, you know. Hugo was mentioning about code coverage earlier, whether you want to have 95%, 98%, 92%. I think those percentages are a bit arbitrary discussion. What I'm looking for is 100% business coverage. Mm -hmm. Even if your code coverage is 50%, yeah. but it has 100% business coverage, that means that 50% of the code that is not covered probably is never used by the business, right? That's a chance somebody can or might be willing to take. But if it has 100% business coverage, all you're using is one REST endpoint with two methods, right? Uh, get and post. Why would you then worry about, and, and you're going to do this for the lifetime of your business, then why would you have to worry about the delete, put, and all the other uh, REST endpoint? Like, you know, just an analogy. So from that point of view, this is where I come from. So thank you, Bruno, for putting that diagram in place because that puts all the other things we said earlier into perspective. Right. And, and so... And, 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 you know, this whole thing about understanding, right? So and it's interesting because when you think about the quality and, and how, much, how many defects we, we get before the software goes to production, it gets all of those things out of this discussion, right? So, you know, I have to understand what I need to do. I have to understand what the user needs. I have to understand what the business needs, right? So the more I do all those things, the, the faster I can actually do the project, right? You know, and so... Uh, uh, so, so that's why once we, and, and, and this, this, this whole discussion here, it really helps when you get your manager, right? Because now you're not going to ask your manager, Hey boss, uh, I, we need more time to deliver the project, right? It's actually going to say, Hey boss, we need to do testing to deliver the project faster. Right. And then your boss is going to say, well, you're saying that if you do testing, we're going to deliver faster. Yes. Do okay. It. So let's do it, right? You know, because that's what your boss needs, right? The boss wants a faster project. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I mean, you you hit the you hit the nail on the head over there uh, when you started saying other things as well, because you mentioned about requirements, business requirements. Actually, if you really see what is testing, testing is exercising the business requirements uh, way before or a little bit before you really start writing your code about the business requirements, right? Because testing is going through all the business requirements and saying, okay, if you have this as input and you want this as output, that means I need to check for all these other variants, right? Then if you have this as input and this as output, I need to check for all these variants, right? Okay, these are my tests. That means my test will drive to your requirements and then we'll ring fence it with the test and then we'll implement the code from that ring fenced test. And if you do that for every business requirement, sub requirement, scenario, use case, whatever you name it, you know, these names are just uh, interchangeably used. If you then satisfy all of those requirements, that's full business coverage, right? And if it's always consistently working in the same way and is reliable and is robust and doesn't fall off, there you go. You have delivered 100% business coverage. 
whatever test coverage you have with them, of course, you know, then you want to do due diligence and make sure you have nearly, nearly full code coverage, right? Because then it doesn't hurt because you've already got full business coverage. And if there are some few unit tests missing or some small, you can just do that. That's a that's a call you can make later on because you've bought so much time already by already starting off in the with the right foot forward, mm -hmm. which is implementing your your business requirements immediately as tests. Cool. So I see Max uh, saying hello for us in the in the in the chat. Hey Max, how are you doing, man? Good to see you here. So if anyone else have any questions, right, or comments about testing or about soft development in general, like just feel free uh, to message us in the comments, right? No, no matter why you're watching this, uh, you know, it could be on, on LinkedIn or YouTube or, or whatever, right? So you can write your comments somewhere in the screen. There's a place for you to write your comment, whatever you're watching this, right? And actually, we just get a question here. Uh, so I see Tomoe. Uh, she asked, uh, I think she, correct me if I'm wrong. Um, so she asked, how do you prevent the choice of quality, whether uh, you're going to BDD, X percent test coverage version control, before you have client startup scenario? Mm. Good point. <laughs> Who wants to start? Uh, I can answer that. Yeah. So you don't think about anything till you have your client's requirements in hand, right? Because you have to also test the viability of your client's requirements. What if there are two requirements that are contradictory to each other or they're wrong? You know, you want to also you have to check the clarity of your requirements. So you don't want to think about all these uh, quality and percentages or not. So, and actually, those things that you will do before you even start writing tests actually will determine the quality of your test. Actually will determine the viability of those percentages of coverages that you're talking about, right? Because I have often had, I, I have also given a talk on this long ago where I actually start off with uh, testing the, the specification. And I'll share this report, resource a little bit later on. And, and I actually start testing the uh, specification by taking the specification and converting into this thing called BDD. That's the Gherkin, uh, uh, using the Gherkin format of writing tests, uh, given when then, right? Or, or there's other formats as well. Uh, what is it? Um, uh, arrange, uh, act, assert, and then, then set up, uh, action, uh, assert, something like that. So there's a lot of those variations. And when you start doing that, you can automatically, when you start converting the client's uh, specification into... Uh, a story, a user story in the Gherkin format, you automatically start reading it in English and you'll automatically start noticing, well, if the stories, if the requirements are correct, you'll start noticing they're correct. They make sense. If they're not, you'll also start noticing that. So those things come first, right? So if, as there's, has been mentioned here, if you don't have the client's requirements and scenarios, then what are you testing? What are you building? There's nothing. You shouldn't even start because you could start creating misconception assumptions, which could have an impact on the work you do later on. You should start with a clean slate, clean mind. Don't do anything. Wait for the scenarios to pop up. That's my answer to that. And if you guys want to add something to it, because I'm sure I must have missed something. Yeah, I want actually, she added a little bit more details here. Yeah, I want, I want, to, I want to add for his, his second comment there, right? So he says, my point is before you have any clients, you don't know what is useful, right? Should you build everything? And he, he himself says that's bad, right? So actually, you know, you don't need to have uh, uh, clients to know what you're building, right? You know, you have you have an idea. There's a problem that you're trying to solve, right? But here is my thing. I'm, I'm going to be more generic a little bit here, right? If you are a startup and you don't have clients, why are you building anything, right? You know, because because way before you start coding anything, you should be solving the problem in yep. whatever way you can, right? You know, uh, mm -hmm. I always tell the story of these two young guys. I don't remember the name of their startup, right? But I was watching, oh, one day I was, I was driving the car, I was watching, the, I was listening to the radio, and there was an interview of these two young guys here in Brazil, in Sao Paulo. 
that you know they 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 built a company together, right? It was a delivery company uh, to deliver supermarket things, right? And so the very first thing they did was they just built a website, a very simple website where people just go there, buy things. And they would walk to the supermarket, buy the stuff in the supermarket, and then walk to the person's house and deliver their house. There's no software, no system, no nothing, right? They first did it. They solved the problem, right? And, and you can say, but Bruno, that's crazy. You know, those guys are going to be able to do what? Like two customers a day. Yes, that's it. So you have clients now, right? You have someone that has a problem and you're trying to solve their problem. So now you can start figure out what needs to be built, right? So, you know, so don't build anything if you don't have customers, right? Go, go have customers first. Exactly. Uh, you know, there was exactly. a book, there's a book I mentioned here the other day uh, from the guy Silvio Meira, right? And Silvio, he's an investor, right? And so when you, anyone that comes to him uh, to to ask for him for investment or, or tips on how to, to do a startup, he says, have you read my book? That's his first question. And the person says, no, I have not. So go read my book, right? Because everything I know is explained there, right? So, and then... If they say yes, I've read my, I've read your book, right? So they, the second question you ask is, how many uh, invoices have you have you submitted? Have you have at least one invoice ready, right? And if he says no, I don't have an invoice, so go get your first invoice, right? Go sell something to someone first, right? And then you can start talking about having a startup, right? You know, so so man. Uh, uh, you know, this is way before testing, man. It's way, way, way before testing. First, go do something. But Bruno, you know, I don't have any. Well, just get a friend of yours to use your software, right? To use your idea. Get, you know, ask, ask, ask your friend what problem he has. You know, just get someone on the phone and they ask you a question. You go to chat GPD, you type on chat GPD, you get an answer, tell the person on the phone. Whatever, I right? go do something. Uh, um, what's his name? A poll... Was Paul Allen, I think, is the, the guy from Y Combinator. Do you guys remember Paul Graham, right? Paul Graham, I think. Yeah. Yeah. So Paul something, right? I think it's Paul Graham uh, from Y Combinator. He wrote this awesome post that I think everyone should should read. So he, everyone that's doing a startup. He says, do things that don't scale. Right? How can you do anything before you do things that don't scale, right? So sorry for the real rant here, but... <laughs> Yeah. Oh, actually, I, I mean, go on, go on, Pedro. You were meaning to say something. Uh, yeah, I, I remember my uh, uh, in the company that I'm working now. They they had that they started at that moment when chatbots was a thing. So every time people uh, uh, doing chatbots, Google is doing chatbots, Facebook are doing chatbots. Facebook was saying, "Oh, chatbot will be the thing." You know, do you remember that time? And they they fought and they say, oh, I will create a, sh uh, he thought about a, a startup, say, oh, I will create a chatbot that people are going to ask, oh, I want to, 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 to get a, a reservation on a hotel and uh, I want the best choice and uh, the, the, le the, the last price, you know, and I want to be in this place nearby that. And then uh, I will have an artificial intelligence that uh, will understand everything and in this and we will get the right reservation for that person and and it's, can you imagine how how difficult would create this kind of artificial intelligence or chatbot or, do, or doing this kind of decisions would be really difficult but he was a, a, a very good entrepreneur and he thought okay let me try this first and he was the chatbot. So when people start, oh, he said, oh, I have a chatbot here, artificial intelligence, and people people start do, uh, uh, asking things in Facebook chat. He, he was, he answering. He was in the, in, in, in other sites of booking and uh, Google see the, the options and paste it to the user, to user see. And then he realized that nobody would 
accept the choice of someone else choosing. Everybody want to have to want to see the choices, want to see the the, the photos, want to see everything. Nobody will gonna use like Alexa to do this kind of thing because you could not never see the 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 the, the, the room, you know. So he in, in his first clients he discovered many requirements that was not he was thinking. And then he start to do stop doing chatbots, stop doing everything, and start doing a marketplace that what it would that would people want to do. So you, you understand? So that's uh, right. it's testing the market, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Because it's way cheaper, right? You know, so so that's that's what we call the MVP, right? You know, it's something that you get someone using what you have, right? So you test your ideas, right? You don't you don't spend months developing something just to get to the point where uh, uh, you know no one's gonna use you know just to find out that no one's gonna use what you have right it's the other way around you first test your idea you first experiment right you solve a problem with someone you do things that don't scale I just put there on the chat uh, the the Paul Graham uh, article do things that don't scale right. So, you know, you first go do things that don't scale. And then when you see there's a market, when you see there's people wanting it, then you can grow as much as you want. Yeah. Really cool. This, yeah, is a go ahead, this, is, this has been a great question, although it's a little bit of a segue into something else. It is, it is important because, um, like, I only answered half in a part of his question, and I thought I missed something. And actually, Bruno, you answered the, the other part where... If you translate that back into the world of testing, it is creating the problem statement, right? right? Yeah, right. creating the requirements because you are first of all you find the problem you said right solve a problem right, and then somewhere around that time you're creating a problem statement whether you verbalize it whether you have not written it or the, or whether you write it in a formal document right whatever whatever that is it, it is creating the problem statement and then solving the problem manually don't write code to solve it right it's a it's a little bit too later in the process that's automation try to do it automatically uh, manually sorry one step at a time this is what i tell my mentees as well do it solve it break the problem into smaller pieces solve it separately spike them prototype them work them out separately and then you have a problem statement then you have a whole set of requirements right each problem each piece that you've broken it into a smaller piece that you made out of the bigger piece that's your problem statement that's your use case that's your uh, you know, your requirement and then when you combine all of them compose all of them together that's when you have solved that one problem that and that is your one problem statement that you're solving for your client so yeah as a startup that's where you want to start if at all you have the capacity the finance and the resources you, and you don't need too much as as bruno was explaining right do it manually do it in the simplest, easiest way. Don't go to write code. It's a little bit later in the process. Experience that process. Document that process. Then start automating bit by bit the small elements of the process. This is how you must build products as well. Right? This is also what MVP is, which what Bruno was mentioning earlier. I think Pedro uh, touched upon on that as well. Uh, minimum viable product. Minimum viable. Right? It doesn't say you need tests and, and that need to run on BDD on a CI CD engine, right? Yeah. It just needs to be a minimum viable product. Yes, you spike and you prototype first. That is also testing. Mm -hmm. Not saying yes. take it to production. Some yes, people now take that to production, right? Takes I know I know startups that take prototype to production. I won't name any one of them, but <laughs> you probably already know that. That's that's not the right approach. But testing is prototyping, testing is spiking. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. then you do the proper formal writing of your problem statement. You break your problem statements into, you know, BDD style, uh, Gherkin stories, user stories. Then you write your implementation from then. Then today's time, there's a lot of automation available for that. That's like somewhere in the middle of the process. But the first step in the process is understand the problem, create the problem statement out of it, you know, gather the scenarios, gather the requirements, test those requirements manually before you even implement it into code. Right? How does it work out? Do it on paper and pencil. Make diagrams. Plan it out. 
then break it into smaller chunks spike each of the chunks prototype each of the chunks separately each of the chunk then evolve those into proper maybe working element implementations but surrounded by test and then compose them all together combine them all together see when you now do it independently like that the components are independent of each other and there's an architectural term for that hexagonal architecture ports and adapters you can immediately start thinking you can make those into modules that are cohesive and if they need to interact with each other then ports and adapters architecture come to and so this is way into the future yeah. right but first make those small components make them independent make them modular and cohesive then think about communicating with each of them right then you can have all these other tests that will come into play but first make each of them workable on its own so that's where unit tests will come into play right then you can have a, a overarching acceptance test that takes all of that and you know people call it integration tests i think just two components are good enough unit tests and acceptance the overarching acceptance test like a bdd style test takes into account all the components and does the business coverage your business requirement and your business coverage is complete you've delivered before time by the way <laughs> you've yeah. delivered more than you expected you would deliver if you do it this way and uh, and i can see for that, that you said or oh, every time you go and decompose the things like oh i'm do i'm i'm about the startup startup is my black box and i can see the tests that i can do around this back black box how this black box is implemented well we are What? talking here like it could be manually right i don't know but i have the tests i can create the tests and and, and realize what are the requirements of this black box and then we can go and decompose it time posing and we can many tests this this new smaller component every time we go in, into this component as we can break down it in is more even smaller ones we can like see uh and then we can see uh, uh can can get so some uh, uh, when we start the composing we get to the code and when we get to the code we we still get to the code in a big block in a big black box that we can realize what the task for example one of our services we can create like a service now uh, it, 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 we came from a, a startup and now we have a, a service inside of this startup that has his own tests around it and then you can go to this code and think of the architecture in about to think about the layers or think about a uh, uh, hexagonal architecture or even a, a normal three layer architecture that we can, that we all we all know about you know but even in this uh, wherever architecture we find we have a smaller layer that we can write code around it and when when we think about all the all the tests that we have uh, uh, in the bigger boxes and then we can choose names like for example when i when i want to when i am in a smaller box that i want to test just a small part of my code that has no dependence of each other i call it in unit test when i want to test uh, bigger chunks of my code that has that, that that they interact with each other but in a smaller way yet like inside my service i call it integration tests but if i want to test my bigger box called service i call it sometimes uh sometimes integration tests sometimes end to end tests it depends on the uh, on what we were talking about you know so the the names are different but the idea is always similar right we are just getting a, getting an abstraction of a thing around making some tests around it and start breaking it great and uh, and there yeah, i think for for me it was uh, very useful that graph uh, shared by bruno because uh, for uh, for us it's really true that If we sell it, uh, this practice as oh, I will take more time and to to deliver something, they never will accept you to 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 go this way. Uh, no, <laughs> no, uh, 
no, no, uh, the man doesn't matter uh, for him. Doesn't matter if it's uh, uh, what is behind if if you are delivering on the time that they they need. So yeah, uh, it's a it's a mind shift. Also, um, we I, I see that a lot of a lot of people has a lot, uh, has some difficulties in the beginning, but once you do more and more, it starts becoming uh, more natural, and uh, and that will 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 bring you also. Uh, it, it's like you are polishing your own skills, so it will be uh, it will be also productive for yourself. And I think, uh, yeah, I, I was thinking just like that. Uh, Peter show, showed him me uh, the chat here, and I was worried about about the time to have uh, to 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 pass through through uh, the demonstration that that Peter prepared for us uh, about testing our code. So. Uh, yeah, that's a great opportunity now, Pedro. If you can, uh, can we can we sh can can we share your screen here? Sure. Sure. <laughs> well, what I uh, what I want to talk about it uh, was when when we are uh, we we started go from the the top to bottom, right? And then we get to the point to have a code, and then we we can think of uh, uh, how do we start implementing this code. And many people say about say about TDD and uh, and some this kind of stuff. Uh, I like the TDD idea, uh, the, the idea of having tests for everything you do. And but the TDD idea is that oh, you created the test first, right? Uh, this is this is interesting. I I I'm a node. Do know the guy? I, I like to 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 approach that we can create our code while we are creating our our tests, right? So, for example, let me just uh, uh, let me just talk about some uh, a small test, okay? So, when we have here, I mean, let, let's think we have a a, a function, okay? And this is a small one, just a function that returns a, returns a small string here, right? And I, I'm not going to many difficult things, but I will, I'm going to talk about how to test the, these layers uh, you together, just have okay? Pedro, can, you, can you increase the fonts um, a lot? For sure. 32, size 32. I think if you do control plus plus, it will increase the font size. Does that work? Or command plus plus if you have a Mac? Yeah, that's it. Yeah, come on. It won't be permanent, which should be good enough for you now, right? Better? Yeah, this is, this is yes. good. Sure. And then, uh, uh, how, how are we going to test it, right? Uh, we are in Python here. So uh, Python has the, um, some some un some testing frameworks let me just choose one here uh the the unit test that is more common and this unit test it, it use uh, it is uh, the most common one in python we have in java the j unit you know so there are lots of different ones but all of them are the same idea you uh, the, the the idea that uh, many said we we have like uh, given then search or something like this and we always have to to prepare our test to prepare our scenario run the, the function we have we, we want to run and then we assert something right so for example in this case my test is really really easy right and i can get the result from my my function my function called bar and in, uh, in case of as i'm i'm here in, in python so i need to import right that's from bar import my code right 
And then I need to assert something. So I will gonna search, I could search equal uh, the result with bar. Uh, okay. And then the the main the best thing that uh, the that the test is do is this this green bar here. <laughs> when you run, you can see the test passing or the test failing, right? For example, if if uh, let me see that I discover, let me think that I discover that okay, this function should not return bar, should return bar one, and uh, and this is my requirement. When I write a test, I dis it's because I discovered that something should be uh, executed this way. It should be behaving this way, right? And then if I run it again and I discover that is wrong, so I don't get it correctly, I say, oh my God, I should have done, I should have adjusted it. And then I can have it right now. But okay, but Pedro, let's think more. Of course, we have just a small function here. But we, in our codes, we always have functions calling functions, right? We always have functions that call functions. And we have lots of other things that I, I, I don't know if I can show everything here that I want. Maybe we can let it to the next session. But for example, in this case, For example, if I have a, a function calling a function and and I need to create a test for that, right? I can just do the same, right? I say, okay, let me go to here and call this test. And I call, and I call this guy here. Oh, I need to import it. Right? Cool. And then I have to search. I search. In my case, the same thing, right? In this case, it's gonna be bar one, Pedro. <laughs> right? Is that, it's working. And say, okay, Pedro, but, you are you you are testing something that is calling other function as well. This is a thing that I want to discuss with, with you guys. For example, uh, this this test here, when it tests just one layer, let me call this function a layer, okay? When I test it this one layer here, I call it a a unit test, okay? Because I want, I'm just testing one layer. And if I'm testing more than one layer, that this case, right? I have one layer calling another layer. It's it's more like what we do, like when we divide our codes in servers, repositories, and controllers, you know? When we have, for example, a service calling repository, uh, we want to, to test all the code together when we are doing unit tests or not? Sometimes, yes. When I have it, I call this call this, call, this guy here as an integration test because it is calling all the layers, right? What do you think about it? Let me ask you about this differenti dif differentiation between unit test and integration test. What do you think about it? So a unit test was testing a unit of functionality, okay? In a sense, you could call an integration test a unit test as well, if the unit is defined to within the bounding box, right? But mm -hmm. if you have to be technical and specific, an integration test tests something where, where the component is, is on the boundary of more than one other components. And you're testing, again, you have to define here, are you testing multiple integrations? Or are you testing a single integration point, 
right? Again, those are specifics. But it is arguable that you can call that as an acceptance test as well, because then you're not worried about the integrating points. You're only worried about what's the end result of this test that I'm trying to do. This component, what is, going to, what is it going to return? I have five different requirements. That's all I need in my business. It should always return those five different requirements when I have these five functions that are called. That are called. What's happening under the hood, I don't give a damn. Then you write five acceptance tests. And you can call it unit test, integration test, whatever, but they are five tests that you accept for your business purpose. You write them because what can happen is in, as, the, as the software evolves, for each of the five tests, Pedro is so smart, he's found five different libraries. Now he has, doesn't have to maintain any of that code and he's replaced five of those functions with one line each that calls that library and the library gets updated regularly and it's well tested and everything. And Pedro has reduced his workload, but the business doesn't care about that. Business has those five requirements for the lifetime of the business, those five tests are passing. So that's the acceptance test. But that is also a unit test in some sense. Unit test when we because think about unit, a... it is the business's unit of requirement that it's testing, but exactly. it is technically called it's technically called business uh, acceptance test. So that's my yeah. answer yeah. from the angles of how I understand it. But of course, people like to call a unit test a unit test, an integration test an integration test, uh, uh, acceptance test, and then there's system test and functional test, security test. But those are specific. Uh -huh. Yeah, that that's why I uh, that's why I'm asking this this uh, 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 bringing bringing this discussion because uh, when we are when we are work, when we are coding here like in, the, in developer point of view, right? Uh, when we, we, it's important to differentiate these kind of layers, these levels, right? If you are thinking about business, the business has its own unit tests, right? If we call if we think code here we can have uh we can have we differentiate for the, the components that are that that code they are 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 testing right so for example in this i separate between the layers of the bar and the layers of the footer but i'm saying that the full layer uh, depends on the bar layer to work right that's what i'm saying here I'm saying that we, I have a dependence. Our code, our code have many dependence when we go to the, the layers uh, below that, you know? So that's what I, I wanna, wanna show here, discuss the dependence. It's important to the to, 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 to develop to understand the, the idea of dependence inside the code, and then to discuss that this, that all this dependence must be analyze it when we are doing them tests I say okay I want to test this guy but this guy has a dependence so may I I may have a error not in my code in this layer here but in the dependence right we can see that for example if we want if we change here again, I will run my test again, and I will gonna see that my test about oh sorry, my test here will not pass. It was not because of my code, right? This is important, and I say how how, how we handle that, right? During during our tests, we handle that using what we call. Uh, mocks, stubs, spies, and then we need to put these guys and make make our layer to be, uh, to make our dependence to be outside of our tests. In this case, we need to put a, like a, a mock in, in, in this, in the, the middle of this dependence, you know? That way, that is interesting to say. I know that we are out of our, but uh, uh, when we uh, when we call this kind of discussion here, uh, I always see, for example, junior, more junior developers that struggle with this kind of con concepts. You know, 
And that's why they always think that the writing test is really difficult. Because when they look at the code, they see that monster with many things doing many different kinds of stuff, right? But when you need to think, you need to make it uh, uh, separated to be able to test it correctly. It is, uh, and that's when, <laughs> yeah, but, uh, uh, we have a couple of time here, don't worry. But uh, that's, a, that's a great example because I, I was thinking on, on a question here, but I, I thought that won't be able to ask because of the time. But uh, actually, one, one side effect that we have by implementing tests and using t uh, tests not necessarily TDD, but TDD, it's a stronger uh, practice as well, is uh, to design, uh, in the end, you end up uh, starting to design your, uh, your component, your application uh, in a better way, because it forces you to see what shouldn't or what, what can be inside the, uh, the implementation, right? Because it, uh, since, as you implemented there, since there's no explicit dependency between foo and bar you you it's it's implementation detail so for if if the full requirements uh, don't have this explicit uh, maybe some only some implementation detail and you don't have to worry about it but once it depends on bar and you should know about it and you should test it separately and uh, and have this strong dependency you can uh, you can always uh, make it explicit and during the test you substitute, you, you replace the, the, the bar with some mock or some other, 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 other things, that, other tools that you have to do that. And that makes your full method more, uh, more isolated by the outside world. So yeah, that's, uh, exactly. that was uh, some, some side effect that I see. It's really interesting to see how, how you start to figure out um, a better design, just because if you have to implement the test, you would like to things to be more decoupled, <laughs> and, and <laughs> exactly. if, if they if they if they can, yeah. And another thing that that what the people from TDD says is that uh, TDD uh, helps you to design your code. That's that's the that's what the test is doing as well. Like when you start to think. Uh, when you start testing, you can you can feel these dependencies. You can see these dependencies. You can when you can start uh, write your code thinking about it, the, and then you create a, a better design. I I man, I think I feel so bad when people say to me, and and, and we and we we are in the stand up meeting, and people ask, oh, how about your task? He says, oh. I'm done coding. I just need to write tests now. <laughs> I've heard that many times. I said, man, how can you say that you've done coding, but you just need to write tests? If you haven't done that until now, and, and they, they go further. They say, no, it's 95% done. I just need to write the tests. <laughs> That's very common. <laughs> no, man, I, I, I went to, my, to one of my colleagues and I said, and, and showed to him. Uh, when, and, he, and he did it for some time and, I, and he sent a PR and I could see how coupled was the tested, the testing, the tests was. And I could show him and say, man, that oh, can you see this? Can you see this coupling, couple, coupling thing? This is this is why you didn't write a test before. If you start your code, your task is writing this test here, you would see that dependence, you'd see that coupling, and you will not be writing this kind of test right now. And I, I and now I'm gonna ask you, and you need to ask you to refactor that, and then you 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 are now in the end of the sprint, for example. Well, you know, the in such cases, the test is a reflection. First of all, the design of the test is the reflection of the design of the code, right? Exactly. Uh, secondly, there's a term for that. 
uh, hate to use it, called retrofitting tests. It's not called test first or test driven. Mm -hmm. It's retrofitting tests. And um, just also, I think I think better, you know this, Pedro, but people seem to think and understand that TDD is a designing tool, which it really isn't, right? TDD is a tool that helps you draw those guardrails and you as a developer, depending on your level of experience and maturity, are able to recognize designs propping up in your in, in your requirements, in your implementation, in your uh, you know in your in in the initial iterations, and then you catch on to those designs, and you just with small increments keep evolving those designs. You don't pick a big design and try to put it into a TDD uh, iteration because that's going to just make uh, um, uh, extra code, more code than you ever need. So you evolve your design using TDD. That's why the thing what you're talking about dependency injection, the more, the cohesion, the the you know the components, all of that come into being, and and they automatically get inserted and passed on to the the objects, and the object creation and composition happens automatically in a better way, and they're all tested and not retrofitted and handholding tests like the ones you will have if you do your test afterwards, test later way of coding and then your your code will also have that de design like you know one depending on the others depending on the, and the cyclic de cyclic dependency that's what will happen when you design i mean can happen it can happen worse than that and you try to write tests after you write your code instead of having your tests drive your code because your test if you if you use your test to drive your code then your test will force you to do the proper the shortest design that you mm -hmm. would be able to to get and achieve your goal, and yet have the minimum code and and the and the simplest design, right? I always talk to people about uh, four rules of simple design. Uh, I will introduce this the next time uh, when you when you'll continue with this topic, and you'll see there's one more topic that goes very well with what you're talking about and the four rules of simple design. But we should we should talk about it in another time because otherwise. You're going to go into another second session. We can have two sessions in one <laughs> session. <laughs> yeah, actually, we, we are reaching that time. We can have more <laughs> sessions. I think it's evening for you, but it'll be like early morning for me when we yeah. finish. <laughs> well, but yeah, uh, but we have to, we, ha we are getting on that time that we start to share uh, yeah. some work for this session. Uh, I don't know, Bruno, do you want to add something that you were, uh, I didn't, didn't give you the opportunity? Before we start this book sharing, no, no, it's all good. Let's 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 share the books, right? Because uh, right. I, think, I think we're 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 running out of time already. So that's great. So yeah. thanks, Pedro, for the great presentation. That is very helpful, and um, that's great. No problem. Yeah, and I think I think you had more more things, right, Pedro? That uh, that you want to show here. I, I I'm not sure if you no. Ah, okay, sorry. <laughs> but, I, I, I had, of course. <laughs> but, yeah, yeah. But, uh, but the, the, the discussion was really yeah. cool. Yeah. Great, but thanks a lot. And and yeah. So, uh, who wants to start with the books? Well, I'll start with the book. Um, since I already mentioned this a second ago, this is one of my most favorite books. I've bought it, and I've given the author. Lean Pub is a great publication. You can give the prize. You can pay the price you want for a book. Um, and this author has written this book called Four Rules of Simple Design, which I think every developer should at least go through it once. It's a very simple read. It's very simple in content. The book is not expensive. And the book is worth uh, having. It's an investment because you can always refer to it. And you know the author talks about the four different things that you need to first consider before you think your design that you used to build what you're building actually adheres to. And so it's this book that I would recommend everybody reading. It's a very light read. It's almost semi-technical uh, or maybe, maybe a little bit non-technical, but I, I that's my take on this. And it is very much close to what Pedro says because one of the rules is passing tests in the book. I think it's the second rule. Yeah, And the other rule is um, uh, removal of duplication. And then yet another rule is simplicity. I mean, these are not the exact words you use, but like you know, your design must be simple. It, it needs to have doesn't does shouldn't have duplication. It should be simple, and it should and the test should pass, and it should express intent, right? 
not just anything. It should express what it's trying to do. So if you, I mean, I don't want to add many more words to it. Um, let's have the next book. Um, whoever wants to go next. Yeah. Go ahead, Pedro. You have yeah, shared the books book. already. Yeah, I shared a book. Uh, uh, I, I, I'm, I was thinking about this topic about testing because of David Farley. David Farley is the one who wrote Continuous Delivery. And uh, he has a, a, a very good uh, content sharing about many topics about software engineering. And one of them is testing. I, I enjoy it a lot. So I, I, I suggest, I suggest the, going to see he, his uh, YouTube channel as well. But he has his, this book that's a very good book about software engineering and has lots of topics, including testers. I think I, I'm reading it yet. I, I, just, I, I bought some some time ago. I'm, just, I'm still reading. But yeah, I, I think it's uh, uh, one of the, the best of these new books uh, about software engineering. Great. Okay. Do you want to go first, sir? Yes. So what I want to want to do really quick here is uh, let me see if I can do this. I want to I want to I, I quickly want to share, you know, the graph that I put right here, right? Uh, uh, oops. Now, can you guys see me still? We can see you, but not your screen. All right. Okay. No, it's just because my. I'm sure now. Yes, we can see a dark screen, but it's uh, probably slowly getting populated. Yes, okay, so yes, so. Okay, so my browser froze here, so I don't know if it's gonna work or not. <laughs> so, uh, it's, it's showing up now. All right. Are you able okay. to navigate? Yeah, all right, so. Okay, so basically, the, uh, I'm just gonna, okay, so that's, that's, the, that's, the, the, uh, that's the blog post that has the same graph that I put here on the back, right? Uh, so you guys want to take a look. So this this blog post, it's uh, it does a overview of the two books that I'm going to share, right? So if you don't want to read the books, read the blog post at least, right? And so at least you're going to have uh, some of the information there. And so uh, the two books that I want to I want I want to suggest, right? One of them is rapid, de uh, developments, uh, rapid development, developer best practice. Um, and that, you know, that's, that's the, the, from Steve McConnell. That is the book that started that research that shows up in the graph. And then uh, you know, the, the research continue uh, for a little bit more. And Capers Joan wrote a, another book called Economics of Software Quality that goes into a lot of detail, right? About, you know, quality and the pricing and all that. So especially if you're working for a large company, I do suggest uh, the, the, the larger book, right? The Economics of Software Quality, because it talks about everything that you need to know about it, you know, how the research was done, the conclusions, all of that. And so that can be very helpful if you wanna convince your boss, if you wanna show your boss, uh, the best, you know, the best thing that you should do, right? So, all the all the books, all, you know, I'm not sure if you get, if you're able to put there, but all the so you go disappear, right? So is you go putting the things there in the chat? Well, something happened with Hugo, right? Or or just uh, yeah, he 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 just got last minute. Oh, he got yeah. drop it here. So he's okay. brought he's brought back he's brought back to us. Right, so I'm putting the books in the chat here, right? So rapid development and economics of software quality. I just put those two books there. And uh, and I'm also going to put the link to the one share chart. That's the blog post. So if you don't, don't want to read the book, you can read the, you can read the blog post. But if you want to convince your boss, you're probably going to have to read the books. <laughs> That's a good one. And, and yeah, from my side, um, I believe that it's very difficult to actually have your Greenfield 
uh, project that you can start uh, with all the tests already done or you get some project that already have all the tests. In many, many cases, you'll get some project that don't have those tests and you have to implement them to start uh, making them better than where it is. So this book is a really, really good one. Uh, working effectively with legacy code by Ma Ma uh, Michael Feathers. It's a really good one because it, uh, it also, uh, he describes the situation as it is, as we, as we see uh, during the project. Oh, you have this situation where if you change something, it will break a lot of other, uh, other places. So how can you deal with this situation? And, and so on. It's a really interesting one and, and really fun to read because yeah, you can, <laughs> you can see some of your real situation there. <laughs> so that's a really good one. I recommend since we are talking about testing, that's uh, some, some ways to escape those situations and, and start creating tests for your project. So yeah. And, and, and so thanks. Uh, thanks a lot, everyone. That, uh, does anyone want to bring some last words here before we end uh, the session? I suggest to put the, the line again with the next session. Oh, people yeah, remember. I was thinking about that, yeah. So just a quick reminder, um, this will be the last session in, on Friday. We'll start to have our live session on Monday. And the next Monday that we will run our live session will be on March uh, 6, okay? Same time, 7 p.m. in Brazil and 10 p.m. EST, okay? So uh, I hope to see you all. Uh, keep you seeing, still, keep seeing you all. Yeah. We're, so we're still doing one week yes, one week no, right? So, we, yeah. so, so we're going to skip next week and then we start next Monday, the other Monday, March 6, <laughs> right? So, so we... We meet you guys here every other week, and um, or like 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 Mun likes to say, right, twice a month, right? <laughs> bi monthly, yeah, that's a tricky word actually. Bi monthly, bi -monthly. Right? yeah, bi monthly means twice a month and not and not every two months, right? <laughs> yeah, great, and yeah, so that's it. Today's session, we are done, and and yeah, thanks a lot, everyone. Thanks, everyone. Thank you. Thank you. Bye-bye. See ya. Bye-bye. See ya.